Hey everybody! So welcome to another tutorial about uh, JITGen. In this one I want to talk about JITGen and JITGL multiple. So let's see what uh, the JITGL multiple is. So let's create it. It's an object of the GL family. And uh, its purpose is to recreate multiple copies of uh, objects that um, of uh, GL objects that we have in our patch. So let's see how this uh, works. So first of all, first of all, it needs uh, the context name gen05 in my case. Then you need uh, an, um, an argument that is the number of uh, GL params that uh, he will have. So GL params are the attributes that we can find on our GL objects like uh, rotation, position, scale, this kind of uh, color, this kind of stuff, texture. So uh, first of all let's write the attribute that is called GL params and uh, let's write a couple of attributes. So position for sure and then scale. Okay, then we need uh, uh, a target name, so we need the name of the object that we are going to render using GGL multiple. So target name, uh, let's say for example target uh, 05. Perfect, then we need actually the target, so let's create a GGL grid shape. So gen 052, but automatic set to 0. So it will not render automatically, but will be just rendered by the GGL multiple. Then this object needs a name, which must be the target name that we gave to the uh, GL multiple object. Let's also give the lighting enable attribute. And then we are good. So how does it work? The GGL multiple to create our objects, it needs a matrix. It needs a matrix, for example, in the case of position, a matrix of coordinates, and in the case of scale, a matrix of uh, scale values. So to create those matrix, I always use the JITGen. I find the most uh, useful uh, tool to create matrices for uh, GGL multiple. So for example, let's attach it here. Let's actually create a JIT matrix to feed into the JITGen. Uh, let's create it three planes because it's the x, y, and z position of uh, the position of our objects then type row 32 and then let's say uh, 3 by 3 so we connect this matrix here and we create a bank now inside our JIT gen we want to uh, give um, to the first uh, outlet of JIT gen uh, we want to give it a set of coordinates that will be our position for the objects that we are going to uh, render with GGL multiple, to create with GGL multiple. So we can use, for example, the normalized coordinates that are automatically generated when we pass in um, an input matrix. Then let's also create a second outlet to pass the scale coordinates. In this case, let's just create a vector with three components all the same, which will be the scale of our single objects. So the second outlet we can connect to the second inlet of uh, GGL multiple, which is the parameter scale, since we saw we say the two inputs and the second is the scale. So when we uh, activate this and then bang, we see some spheres here. Let me create a JITGL handle. And let me connect it to the GGL multiple so we can take a look. So, yeah, we have a grid of spheres. So we create multiple copies of the sphere. We create nine copies because three by three is equal to nine. So all the coordinates that will be generated inside the norm object in GTGen will generate as nine uh, coordinates. And every sphere gets positioned in one of those coordinates. But you see that the coordinates are not actually centered in the center of the world. They are actually all on the positive axis, positive x axis and positive y axis. So in order to correct that, we could say signet normalized coordinates. So now the coordinates are centered because the signet normalized coordinates, 
they go from minus 1 to 1 in both axes as we saw in the previous tutorials about cheat gen. So now um, this is simply a grid of spheres. What we, if we want a cube of spheres? Well, there is a simple solution and a, and a more a bit complex solution. So the simple solution is just to create a three-dimensional uh, matrix with bank, and now we have a cube of spheres. Because automatically the signal normalized coordinates object will create also uh, signal normalized coordinates for the z axis. But let's say that we don't want to work with um, a three-dimensional matrix, but simply with uh, a two-dimensional create still a cube. Well, then we can do something like this. We just create a two-dimensional matrix of uh, nine um, cells on the x-axis and three cells on the y-axis. And then we do, so if we do something like this, we get that. But let's see how we can transform this uh, two-dimensional grid into a cube of spheres. So let's go inside the JITGEN and let's uh, start programming a bit. So instead of the signal normalized object, let's use the cell object. Now the cell object will give us uh, uh, the coordinates of the single cells of the matrix, uh, not normalized, so exactly the integer numbers to which every cell in the matrix corresponds. So in our case, it will give us number between 0 and 8 for the x-axis and 0 and 2 for the y-axis. And we want to transform these uh, two-dimensional coordinates into a three-dimensional vector. So let's create this vector here. Okay, so the first thing we want to switch our x and our y. Now the y, we can just divide the y by 2 and attach it as it is to the y value, because in this case we will have values that go from 0 to uh, 1. We will have 0, 0 0.5 and 1, because 0 divided by 2 is 0, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this will go in the range 0 to 1. Then here we can, for example, multiply this by 2 and subtract 1. So we are back in the range, we are back in the range, minus 1, minus 1, 1. So our y coordinates, it's already good to go like that. If we bang the matrix out, we will just get our x, y position that it's actually good. So, let's see what we have to do for the x value. So, Let's start by dividing this by 3, so we now have a range that goes from 0 to 8 uh, divided by 3. If we take the floor value of this, uh, of this number, we will get rid of all the floating uh, point values in between. So we will just get the, lower, the, the nearest lower integer. So in this case, uh, uh, we will get, uh, for example, 0, let me write everything, 0 divided by 3 is equal to 0, 1 divided by 3 is equal to 0, and then 2 divided by 3 is equal to 0, and this is because we are taking the floor, I'm considering the output of the floor which will uh, get rid of all the floating point values, and then we have 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1, 4 divided by 3 is equal to 1, 5 divided by 3 is equal to 1, and then we have 6 divided by 3 that is equal to 2, and then uh, the numbers just go, just remain to 2, because 7 divided by 3 is also equal to 2, 8 divided by 3 is also equal to 2, and we are done. So what we have to do is just divide this number by 2, and now we are back with our grid. Let me take a look. Exactly, we are back with our grid of uh, 9 uh, spheres, but as you can see the zeta value is set to 0 because nothing is attached to the zeta value yet. So, uh, what do I get here? Flot, flute not found. Okay, this is another. So, okay, let's see what do we have to do now with the zeta axis. Let's take the module 3 
of the x uh, value. So this will just go from 0, 1, 2. So 0, 1, and 2 repeatedly for 3 times. So this will just do that 0, 1, 2, then 0, 1, 2, and then again the same values. And then we can uh, divide this by 2. And for every x cell, uh, the cell, so as you can see here, for three times this will give me just the same x cell, but the z will be different for every x cell. So same x uh, value, but different zeta value for every x cell. We attach this here, bang that, and we have our cube of spheres with just a two-dimensional matrix. Pretty interesting. So, let's see now how we can generalize this uh, algorithm. So, if we want uh, a cube that is bigger than uh, um, 3 to the cube spheres, so 27, so let's see uh, what we can do to uh, make this um, algorithm valid for every dimension of our cube. So, uh, as we have just to replace these numbers with their uh, fixed uh, uh, counterpart that is provided to us by cheat chain. So, for example, this could be dim point epsilon. So, let's create a dim object here. Let's switch the epsilon because it's a cube, so the epsilon dimension will always be the one that we need in order to uh, replace these numbers. So, epsilon minus one, and also here. This is uh, with epsilon minus 1 and also here, and this is uh, the input epsilon. So, this is the generalization of this algorithm. Now, for example, if we want to have 6 uh, spheres per side, then we have to put the, the square of 6 here, so 36, and bang, and we have uh, 6 by 6 by 6 spheres. If we want 9, for example, then this is going to be 81, and we have our cube of spheres. Now, this is going to be quite heavy for my old computer, but yeah, this is the generalization of the algorithm. Okay. So, let's say now that I want to change the color of these uh, values according to, I don't know, their position. So let's add another parameter and let's say let's create another output here. This will be the color output. Then we can just use uh, we can just actually use uh, uh, the position value that is still uh, in the range 0 to 1 and let's see what we got. Oh, we get an old black, I yeah, sure because we didn't attach it. So yeah, now we get the position uh, visualized as color. As you can see in the center, the position, the color should be uh, 0. No, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 here. This is why we get this kind of gray in the center. So, okay, we did it. And uh, yeah, I want to stay uh, short for this tutorial, so I think this will be all. And in the next one, uh, possibly in a few, in the next days, uh, we will go further and talk further about what you can do in GTGen and GGN Multiple. So uh, stay tuned, as you as you say. And if you want, uh, you can visit my website www.federicofoderaro.com, and uh, uh, of course. I encourage you to visit my Patreon that I will write in the description the, the link. So, okay, thank you guys for following and see you on the next one. Ciao.